mountains as barriers. What spoils my sleep is not the strength of the enemy, but that immense mountain barrier. Jose San Martin In the early 1800s, colonies in South America began seeking independence from Spain. One of the leaders in the fight for independence was Jose de San Martin of Argentina. After Argentina became independent, he decided to help defeat the Spaniards in Chile and Peru. He had one major problem. San Martin and his army were in Argentina, on the eastern side of the Andes. San Martin had to cross the Andes to get to Chile. San Martin chose to cross the Andes using a pass that was nearly 15,000 feet high. The Andes are difficult to climb. They are steep and rugged. Even the passes are high. At such elevations, it is cold and windy. The air has less oxygen. People who aren't used to being so high up can become confused and sick. Some even die in the thinner air. San Martin and his army set out early in 1817. They had 5,000 soldiers, 10,600 mules, 1,600 horses, and 700 head of cattle. They also had to get all their supplies, including heavy cannons, over the mountains. The soldiers were lucky. Most of them survived. The animals were not so lucky. Only 4,300 mules and 500 horses made it to Chile, and none of the cattle were left. The struggle paid off, though. The Spaniards in Chile were caught by surprise and were quickly defeated. San Martin also won the battle in Peru. By crossing the Andes, San Martin and his soldiers helped Chile and Peru gain independence. Mountains cause difficulties for all travelers, not just for armies. Still, people have managed to find ways to cross mountains. Sometimes people build roads that go in S-curves back and forth across the mountainside. That way, cars or trucks don't face such a steep climb all at once. Even so, traveling these mountain roads is tricky. Sometimes you can't go around or over a mountain, but you can try going through it. How? By using a tunnel. People have dug tunnels for thousands of years. However, new machines were invented in the 1800s, which allowed people to dig tunnels through mountains. The first mountain tunnel was a railroad tunnel built through the Alps between France and Italy. This tunnel took more than 14 years to complete. Today, a tunnel for cars, buses, and trucks runs beside the railroad tunnel. When people need to cross mountains, they look for the lowest places to cross. These are called passes and gaps. In the late 1700s, Daniel Boone helped create a road through the Appalachian Mountains of Virginia, using the Cumberland Gap to cross these mountains. Settlers in the United States followed this road to new homes in Kentucky. Farther north, engineers and laborers used the Mohawk River Gap in a clever way to pass through the Appalachian Mountains. In the early 1800s, engineers and laborers built the Erie Canal across New York. The canal dramatically cut the amount of time needed to travel from east to west across the state. In settling what eventually became the western United States, wagon trains needed to cross the Rockies to reach the Pacific coast. They used passes, including the South Pass of Wyoming. Long ago, people began to settle and create villages. Most people chose to settle in valleys and on plains, but some people chose to settle in the mountains. Some settled on the mountainsides, others on plateaus in the mountains. A plateau is a flat area of high ground. Sometimes plateaus stand on their own. Sometimes they are part of a mountain range. So, why did people settle in these high places? Maybe they went there to escape enemies. Maybe the beauty of the mountains attracted them. People who live in the mountains often are separated from other people. For example, the Basques settled thousands of years ago in the Pyrenees, which are the mountains separating Spain and France. The mountains cut the Basques off from other people. Over time, their language became quite different from Spanish and French. People living in the Andes Mountains live at very high elevations. 
so do the people living in the Himalayas. When people from lower elevations travel high up into the mountains, they tire easily. They find themselves short of breath and get headaches. Yet the people who live high up in the mountains don't have these problems. Why? Because they have lived at high elevations for hundreds of years. Their bodies have adapted to their mountain environment. Mountains have had both positive and negative effects on history. Mountains have prevented the spread of new ideas. They have made it difficult for people to communicate with each other. However, mountains have also offered protection and contributed to the creation of unique cultures. Perhaps now, when you see mountains off in the distance, or drive over or through them, you will think about how they have helped to shape our world.